So, back for some more Battle Spot Doubles with the Cottony team. I'm going to stick with Cottony for now, rather than Winsicott, because this is supposed to be a fun team. This is probably not going to be a good team in Battle Spot Doubles at all, because it was good in 16, and that's totally different. So, have some more fun with the Cottony. I have put Ghostium onto Age of Slash now, so having a Z move in Battle Spot Doubles is probably a good idea, because again, they, they didn't exist in 16. And the Power Anklet was mainly for Bronzong and Xerneas, so... Bronzong, I'm not expecting to see too much of, although, to be fair, like, you could probably get away with, like, a, a Z Trick Room Hypnosis thing with Bronzong now. But Xerneas definitely isn't the thing, so Power Ankler isn't that useful. It would have undersped a Moongus, which still probably is going to be a thing, even though it seems to be paired with Finny the most for some reason, which I don't get, but oh well. Going to find a 1400s guy, and that is just going to be Zelda's world's team in Battle Spot Devils, so... It'll be interesting to see how I match up with that. I don't have anything... No, I have I have Salamence faster than the Ninetales, and I'm pretty sure a Double Edge would KO it, because it's going to be like clay. So I probably should leave the Salamence here. I can't Prankster the Mandibuzz, which is important to note. I can't Prankster with Lele in general, actually, so... I don't think Cottony should be brought against a Lele. Unfortunately. Um... Rotom could be good. Rotom could actually be really good, especially with its Assault Vest. Like, there's only two physical attackers, um, Arcanine, which can't really touch Rotom, because it's got Flare Blitz and Bulldoze, and Garchomp, which has only got Rock Slide here, so Rotom is actually going to be really good here. Um, do I want to lead it, though? I don't know if I want to lead it, because it's going to be really good. I think I want Sylveon as well. It's just, do I want Inferno for Age of Slash? Hmm. I'm gonna go with Rotom. No, I'm gonna go with Sylveon. I'm gonna have Rotom. Hang on, I'm gonna have Age of Slash. Because that's much better at hitting the, the Lele. Because it's a slow, bulky Lele as well. So I'm assuming that a Double Edge wouldn't knock it out. So, we'll see, we'll see. As you can probably hear, the audio is still a little bit strange. I haven't figured out what's going on with that. Because I have to, had to reduce the quality of my webcam. Um, so that this, like this, the audio sounds so much worse than this. If my, um, my webcam looks somewhat decent. But this is pretty good. Now, I've been intimidated. But do you reckon a helping hand drake and meteor KO's Arcanine? I mean, it might. I'm not sure. Because it had Flare Blitz, Bulldoze, Helping Hand, Protect. So. I'm curious, because it. Was it. It was. I'm pretty sure it was an Adamant Arcanine. So, Helping Hand Draco should get it. But then that would give him a switch into something like Lele as he goes for Tailwind, and that could be bad. Because I think I want a Calm Mind here. Because I've intimidated him as well. So I'm going to switch into Rotom, Preserve Intimidate, and I'm going to go for a Calm Mind. Could be Flare Blitzing the Sylveon here, which it probably will be, um, unless he wants to switch his Arcanine out. But I shouldn't take that much after the Intimidate. He is switching Arcanine out, so that's that's not bad. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very pleased I didn't go for Helping Hand Draco there. That would be really bad. Wow. But this Calm Mind is going to be really useful. And with my Assault West on Rotom, I'm going to be taking things really well. Like, he gets a Seed, which makes a lot of sense to... Um, so his Mandibuzz would make it through the turn if I was, like, Specs Hyper Voice or something, but... I'm gonna get my Calm Mind here, which is really nice. Effectively giving me a Specs. But he's got... Oh, he's got Size Shock, actually. That's gonna be awkward. And go for Electro Whip here. And I'm expecting him to Size Shock my Sylveon. But he could go for a Calm Mind himself. Would Psyshock do that much? Um, no, I'm just going to go for Hyper Voice. He could try and be cheeky in Calm Mind, which he is going to do, so I'm glad I didn't detect. So this is going to kind of cancel out my Calm Mind, but that's fine. Is he going to taunt my Sylveon to stop another Calm Mind? Yeah. Makes sense. So Detect would have still been fine, but I'm fine with this. 
Need another electro web to slow him down below my Rotom, though. And this should still do a sizable amount to mana of us, because both of them are at plus one special defense, but I'm at plus one special attack, so. That is nice damage. That is really nice damage. But now a side shock probably KO Sylveon. And that wouldn't be so bad, because then that would give me my switching to Salamence. Because I'm getting another Electro Web off here. I'm pretty sure I take a side shock. Because it's a bulky melee. It's not that invested in special attacks. Sylveon's got not great special defense, though. Oh, physical defense. It's got great special defense. <laughs> Hmm. Do I want to detect here? Or do I just hyper voice again? Because Amanda Buzz isn't going to be doing too much now. I think I will detect. I can't detect. That's a point. I'm going to hyper voice. Because I've been taunted. I can't detect. So the Psy Shock's definitely going into Sylveon here. It's not going into Sylveon here. But. Rotom may be able to take that. That's really clutch. Because now, I think I get a double KO. And that's going to be really good. And he'll only have one turn of Tailwind left, and he'll have no Tailwind left. Uh, no Tailwind setters. So he'll be stuck with Arcanine. Um, kind of wishing I brought Inferno Clover Aegis Slash now, because this Lele is likely to be dealt with. Unless it was a roll on the previous Hyper Voice. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. Mana Buzz. That's better. That's better because it's at minus two speed in Tailwind, so I can... Attack it with Rotom first. Well, actually, Rotom will be KO'd to whatever comes in. It's going to be Arcanine or probably, I would assume, Zerkatry. It's just going to be Arcanine. That's fine. How fast was the Arcanine? Fast enough, surely, to bulldoze and. Um, to be faster than Coco, so it would be faster than my Rotom. I don't feel like I need to save Rotom here. But, again, um, Intimidate on the Arcanine would be really nice. And it's actually... No, it won't be a... Would Sylveon on outspeed? It wouldn't. That would be the only issue, because I would want to switch into Salamence to get the Intimidate, but then I would almost certainly eat a foul play, which wouldn't be ideal. So, I'm just going to assume that I survive the Flare Blitz, and I'm going to go for another Electro Web. And Hyper Voice. This could be into Rotom as well. Okay. Yeah, I didn't need the Intimidate so much. And I do hit the Mana Buzz, which is important. If I'd have missed that, it could have been bad, but that's fine. Because now the Arcanine is going to be slower than my Rotom, I will be able to get a Hydro Pump off against it. I'm going to be getting a single target um, Hyper Voice now, plus one, which is going to do a lot. It'll probably bring him down to his berry. Yeah, I did a lot. Now, if my mental calculations are right, it's going to be super close whether Sylveon outspeeds the um, Arcanine. But now my Salamence looks really good. I don't want to switch it in on a Rock Slide, because I want to have the Mega Evolution to get the 50 defense before he starts Rock Sliding. But things look really good now. I'm going to go for a Hydro Pump into Arcanine. I'm going to be fine sacrificing both things here. Because I'll be able to Draco his, his Garchomp and um, things will be lovely. I'm expecting to lose both Pokemon here. But yeah, he's going to go for Helping Hand Rocks like. Because he could have gone for a Swords Dance and I didn't want to give him that opportunity. Now I can just Draco the, the Garchomp forever. Because Salamence will win. Because his Arcanine can't touch me. So I just need to hit a Draco, basically. Because he can't bulldoze my Salamence either. Um, Infernic would have been miles better than Aegislash, but I brought Aegislash for the Lele. Didn't expect to be hyper voicing the Lele after it had calm minded, though. So. I think Aegislash was probably still probably the better the call. Although, obviously, I'm facing down two things. And Mandibuzz would have been good against the Aegislash. So I'd brought it just for the Lele, but. Obviously didn't need that. So I'm gonna go for a Draco. And if it hits, that would be lovely. And I do have the Ghostium on my Aegis Slash now, so I will just go for that into Arcanine. 
So it doesn't really matter if I miss the Draco, unless I miss it like three times, because one miss won't matter. Rock Slide is doing what, 30? So it won't be so bad. Maybe Helping Hand Rock Slides, but yeah, he's, he's, he's going for a Draco miss. And I do get my immediate speed, so even if he was max speed on his Garchomp, which I don't think he is. Okay, I do hit, nice. Um, then I would have been, um, I would have been faster anyway, so. Yeah, that's nice. And then the Ghost Team will pick up the Arcanine, so that was really nice. And now I'm I'm second place in the world. <laughs> That's how it works, right? I'm pretty sure. Considering I was using Omega Salamence and Aegis Ash, Sylveon, and a Rotom, all four things that aren't allowed in VGC 17. So <laughs> that was nice, though. Interesting, he didn't bring his Nine Tails because I would have thought that would be pretty good, especially against Omega Salamence and getting up Aurora Veil with this team. Is really nice. And he didn't bring Zerkatry as well. So, quite interesting, but he's knockout on the Arcanine with the Ghostium. Or a never ending nightmare, I should say. It's not really a Ghostium. Kind of is. I call it Ghostium because it's quicker than never ending nightmare. You know what I'm talking about. But, I'm gonna search for another one. Hopefully, we can start to climb. Yeah, maybe Age of Slash. Looking back, like, because he did have three things that could threaten it a lot, which you kind of need, um, needed to do if you're facing down an Aegis Slash with Lele. But, like, Inferno would have objectively been better in that situation, but I think Aegis Slash would have still been fine. Like, overall, as a pick against his team. Especially if I could have, like, burned the, the Groundium. But then again, I'm not White Guard, so if I was White Guard, that would have been really good, but it doesn't really matter. I should probably pick different... Um, music. Totem Pokemon's just my favourite one. So. Okay. Kind of look like, looks like Team Leaky, almost. <laughs> well, I guess the Gyarados, Abomas, Snow, and Rhyperia. Almost certainly Mega. No, actually, I was going to say almost certainly Mega Gyarados, but it could very easily be Mega Abomas, Snow. Like, Age of Slash looks really good. But I just have to be careful of a chandelier. Um, but I should be able to take... Unless he's Neverending Nightmare. Unless he's Ghost here. <laughs> so I'm saying Neverending Nightmare there. That's that's quite strange. Would Cottony be alright here? Because he's got no Lele. Um... I think these two should be okay. I don't know if I want to bring Salamence. Because Rotom's really good here. Outside of the Abomas Snow. So I think I will bring that. And then do I want to bring Sylveon? Sylveon's not there. I'm going to bring Salamence. But I did bring Sylveon. That guy who said it should be a Tapu. <laughs> you just have to give it time. Like, three, three matches isn't a judge of whether a Pokemon should stay or not. And Sylveon did a lot of work in that previous match, so. Hopefully I can sort out the audio stuff soon, because I think it's sounding a little bit worse in this episode, but. Oh well, I'll have to figure out something soon, but that's not really the, the lead I wanted, because I don't know if he's going to be Ghosty in Chandelure. Because Ghostium knocks out either of his Pokemon here. Because you'd like expect him to want to try and Volt Switch Trick Room. That's usually the setup when you lead Coco with a Trick Room setter and have a slow team. So fake Out could be nice, but then if I go for the Ghostium into Chandelure, then I'm in Blade form, and that's not going to be good. Oh no, it will be good, because I can King Shield... He'll bring my Infernic down to Blaze and Overheat probably gets him. And I'm quite a speedy Age of Slash, so I am actually going to go for... Do I need to... No, I, I can get away with just Shadow Ball, surely. Surely. I don't need to Ghost Demon to a Chandelure. And he's going to be a slow Chandelure, so I'm, I'm 
hoping my Aegislow Slash actually outspeeds. Which it does. Unless he's going for Trick Room. If he was going for Voltsu's Trick Room, then that's fine. But if he's going for Trick Room, I can Shadow Sneak him. Kapow. Okay, it was Sash. That makes sense. So is this going to be Trick Room or is it going to be... Yeah, it's going to be Trick Room. That's fine. <coughs> It'd be really nice if I could just faint his Chandelure here, but obviously I can't. I mean, just like, still looks pretty good against his team. Outside of Rhyperia. So I'm not sure if I want to Shadow Sneak and just lose my Aegislash here. I'm going to overheat into Coco. I think I will Shadow Sneak. Okay, interesting. Ah, now he's getting Rhyperion straight away. So that makes sense, that makes sense. And he's probably going to care with my Aegis Dash here. With the Volt Switch, I wouldn't expect it to take. Unless this uh, KOs, which I don't expect it to. Because I'm not in Blaze yet. Oh, wow, just Electrium. That's not, that shouldn't be in Tage Slash, because if I King Shield, then that does nothing. If I stay in blade form, then that's unnecessary. So, that's an interesting gigawatt. Yeah, it's Aegis Slash. That, that, that's curious. Especially because he's not Groundium Rhyperia. And I still got my Sash on Infernape as well, so I can KO the Coco here. I can theoretically get a double KO. As long as there's no Rock Slide flinches. I'm gonna go for close combat into Coco, because that also covers a Flash Fire switch on Chandelure. Like, I wouldn't be able to hit a Chandelure switch in with Infernape at all anyway. Can't actually touch Chandelure with Infernape, that's quite funny. Um, but I don't want to give him a flash fire boost and the close combat will still KO. So close combat would still be fine into the Coco. And obviously Hydro Pump is a fantastic move. So we'll see what happens. That's fine. That's fine. Is that fine? He gets a free switch into another Trick Room Sweeper. Oh, that's that's bad if it's a bonus note. Hmm. That went down way too slowly, but... I was confident that would KO, but... Wish I would have gone for a faint Hydro Pump now. That would have been nice, but... This is a bomber snow, this could be bad. This could be bad. This could be very bad. How many turns of Trick Room? Two. So I will be able to protect my Salamence. So I should still be okay. It is two, right? Yeah, it's two. Because I can lose my Infernape here. I'm going to go for close combat into right here because that's more important. Um, yeah, taking out right here is more important because Salamence can KO the Abomb Snow. So I'm going to double into right here. It has just protected as well. But I'm expecting to lose at least one. I won't lose both here. I really should not lose both, but I will lose one. Because he's either going to grass move into my Rotom, hopefully an Energy Ball, or um, Blizzard. It is Energy Ball. So that's good, because I can take this. And I might be able to take a Rock Slide. Probably not. But please don't flinch, Inferno. Please do not flinch. That's not bad. But that's not enough. Please beat this policy, okay. Okay, actually with the hail, this could be enough. I need Hyper Voice to immediately take out that um Obama Snow though.
because hopefully everything is in hyper voice range. Because he's not assault vest on Rhyperia. But I want to faint one of them. I'm going to faint and protect. And I need... I need one of them to be in range. But I could just go and calc the hyper voice on Obama Snow. And I could go and calc it on Rhyperia. But Rhyperia's not got great special defense. With the hail damage. It should be okay. Because I'm going to faint. Which one? So it, like, it could be important. Hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Okay. I'm fating the, the um, right area, it seems. I mean, a bomb of snow could survive the hyper voice. But I think the Rhyperia is probably more likely to survive without... Uh, maybe maybe I should have fainted the Abomas Snow, because factoring the faint ship and the hail... Yeah, that did, that did nothing. I should have fainted the Abomas Snow. But Piper Voice needs to, to be a double KO here, else I will lose. So it's going to be close. And I'm reasonably invested into special attack with my Salamence. I could have a surely in range. I should have fainted the Evolver Snow. So I can't afford to go for Double Edge because either of them can KO me now. I don't want to go for a Rock Slide miss, so I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice and hope it's enough on both. I don't know my Evolver Snow calcs at all. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. This should KO. Yes, okay. Now, is it worth going for a double edge? Absolutely guaranteed. In no, no. Wait, I was going to say I protect as the hail KOs the chandelier, but that's a bad idea because he would get the trick room, so I have to attack. Because I was going to turn this Hyper Voice into a single target, but that's not a good idea. I still need Hyper Voice to KO. Because a double edge recoil would put me into Shadow Ball range shortly, so I'm going to still have to go for a Hyper Voice and still hope that it's enough to KO Bob Snow. I really wish I ring I fainted. Please do not survive on that much. It would look so silly if I fainted the wrong thing. I fainted the wrong thing. And that was a What? That was a crit. How was that a crit? How did that do nothing? That's insane. That didn't crit the Chandler, right? That crit the a bomber snow. How did that do so little then? Surely a crit knocks out a bomber snow. Wow, okay, fair enough. Unfortunate. So definitely wishing I fainted the Abomas snow, and I don't know, it was it was like that much, not that much, so. Maybe the faint wouldn't have KO'd the Bomb Snow, especially with how bulky that was. Maybe it was like max special defense or something, because that was... That, that was... that was the crit on the Bomb Snow, right? I'm not making that up. Because I am very surprised But that, uh, but... Oh well, fair enough. That shows how bulky a Bomb Snow is, I guess, so... We'll just be continuing with this as we go on, so... 1-1 one, one in this episode. I guess better than the previous episode. <laughs> Because <laughs> we didn't actually, well, it could have been 1-1. I think I was in a good position in the DC match, but we'll see. Hopefully we can get two wins in the next episode. Thanks for watching.